We've just unpacked a bit of the context within which the markets are operating at the moment. Uh, and for now, we've got the markets managing to stay pretty positive with the uptick we saw come into play yesterday. What are your expectations for the trading day ahead? I mean, our expectation is that the market performance should continue to be on the uptick. Um, we see a lot of companies with good valuations in the banking sectors, um, especially which should act as the driver for the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, so we have a number of, of uh, undervalued stocks um, in the sector. And also, if you look at um, in terms of the projections and the forward P's and the forward price to book, um, relative to um, other frontier markets, you would see that um, the Nigerian stock exchange continues to offer a good value for long-term investors. So expectation is that the optic should continue in the market um, for the rest of the week. Um, last week it was up by 0.5%. Uh, yesterday, as you mentioned earlier, it was up by 0.41%. And the market has generally been up by uh, over 10% this year. So our expectation is that as we continue to see some stability on the macroeconomic front, um, and as the micro indices continue to look good, uh, my expectation is that the performance should continue to uh, drive the market as a whole. What's interesting is that, uh, is, is that it's fringe players that are actually dominating trading activity. I mean, yesterday, Starcom's rallying with a 4.8% uptick. That's close enough to the upward limit on, uh, allowed on a day. What's your view on Starcom's at the moment? I think Starcom's generally, um, I mean, if our, our expectation is that Starcom's should move back into positive territory from next year. Generally, Starcom's has really underperformed um, the general expectations in the market in terms of um, their earnings and the projected, their, their, their future projections. So basically, we think that the optic in the value of Starcom's was because um, the market has already, or Starcom's had already lost 80% of its value from the market highs uh, when it came, it came to the market uh, a few years ago to, to issue, to do a public offer. It's lost around 80% of its value. So that um, because it's starting from such a low base, um, obviously um, the market, as it continues to um, look slightly um, uh, well valued, investors might step in, especially speculators might step in to uh, hold some shares in Starcoms. And also, if you look at the uh, price to book ratios, the projected price to book ratio, it looks uh, quite attractive for a Starcoms. So we believe that investors are now stepping in to, um, to take some advantage in Starcoms, even though we think that, you know, over the long term, uh, Starcoms is not, you know, a company that, that you'd buy to hold for the long term. Especially in a context where yesterday we heard a party that a party Zane Tayyip may well be on the cards and be coming to the fore. How do you see this changing the playing field and what are the implications then for Starcoms? Because one would assume it would certainly have its work cut out for it in terms of competition moving forward. Yes, absolutely. Um, Starcoms is not directly in the GSM market. Um, it's more predominantly in the CDMA market. Um, but Obviously, uh, Bati has been looking for a buyer since you know, the $24 billion bid for MTN fell through um, in September last year. Uh, so it's a good development for the market. Zane has a strong footing in the Nigerian market, and we think that um, Bati would be able to tap into some of those advantages uh, if they acquire Zane. Um, additionally, the, the board of uh, Zane has also approved the the prospective takeover. So this should be a good development for the market yeah. as a whole. Well, um, also, Zane has been uh, looking be to offload uh, some of his uh, African assets last year so that, you know, Bati presents a good opportunity for Zane to be able to achieve this.